Friends, welcome to my video. In this video, we will see how to set up Auth 2.0 authentication for your Google account to obtain and obtain the access token for running Gemini APIs. So let's begin. We will follow the steps in this particular document uh, provided by Google. So where it says how to set up the authentication for Auth to quick start, and that's for Gemini APIs uh, to be used. Okay. So let's see begin. So I'll go step by step. So first step says enable the API. Just click on this button, and it will take you to the Google Cloud Console and do the particular project wherever you want to do. So you can set up for any particular project. I will be doing it for my demo project. Click on next and click enable. It may take a while to enable it, but it, it will be done. As the next step, it says configure the auth consent screen. So just click on this button again and it should take you to a, this particular screen. Uh, or you can also manually go by going to menu API services and auth consent screen. So menu api consent and click on this auth consent screen both are same so over here uh, since i have created so it shows me this demo app but however for you it may be showing to create a new one so click on this and give some name it's just for your reference uh, give the respective email ids of your uh, like over here the support email id whatever email id you want to provide and the developer contact information click on save and continue in the scope section for now you can leave it empty also or you can add it uh, and add later or you can add it right now for adding just click on add or remove a scope and by default it will require few scopes the list is given below so if you scroll down here it says the list of scopes what is needed one is cloud platform so just come here control v and this should be select this make sure since i have already done is already selected the second one is directory language retriever. So just come here again and this time this should be selected retriever. And also what I have also done is, is I have also selected a tuning part. So this is extra but that's not required. So just once you have selected all three you can just click on update. And if you come here it will show you the list of uh, scopes what you have added. So one is the cloud platform, one is generative language and one is generative language retriever. Tuning and retriever. Then click save and continue and save and continue. Oh, okay. I think previous uh, one you have to give the test user. So I just skip that. I'll just go back quickly. So this was for scope. After scopes, you have given. So when you click save and continue, this test user space comes. And here you should add the test users by just clicking on this and giving the required email ID of the test user. Then click save and continue, and that's all done. You have to choose the user type as external over here. So back to dashboard and I think this step is also done which was step number 2. Now we will come to step number 3 where it says how to authorize credentials for desktop application. So again it says go to menu blah blah credentials or you can click on this button and it will automatically browse you to this particular credentials page and over here uh, create credentials or client ID. So create or client ID and just select the desktop app click create so if i go back to the instructions it says desktop app you can give any name it doesn't matter i have left it as default and click create click ok the newly created will come up and then download the json file so i'll just download the json file click ok and i have got the json file over here in my folder okay now it says to rename the json file to client secret so let me go back and over here I'll just rename so basically it's asked me to remove the identifier the last part just delete it and that's it you get client underscore secret dot json file so done with this step also now to set up the def application default credentials which is basically acd to convert this into more usable uh, credentials we have to pass its location to the this one uh, cloud authentication application so basically it's asking me to run this particular command okay so i'll do one thing i'll copy this and i'll go here i'll create a batch file out of it first so so what i can do it is google authentication okay i think i should have changed it to batch so last extension i'll change it to batch to make it as a batch yeah perfect now I'll just right click and edit it in notepad and I'll copy the text from there. I think what I can do it is wait first let me minimize this font size and then I'll just remove the 
last this backslash that's basically for new line i want to run it as a single line and then click on close so this is your container of your batch file and then it asks me to convert run this here from my command line so i'll do one thing i'll go to the command prompt and go to the powershell make sure you go to the powershell so if you uh, are not aware so just click on this windows powershell uh, to open or control shift one i don't know and then we can run this so first let me see what are the files we have we have the client secret which we created and we created just now google authentication dot bat so we can run this and let's see what it happens so the moment you run it will say okay so if you get this error i'm not sure if it's definitely not a scope problem so i'll let me do one thing instead of running it in a from a batch file i'll run this command directly so let me copy paste and open a new uh, command uh, window and now control c i'll just in this new command window i'll just paste it let's see what it happens okay so this time it's uh, working so it's asked me to choose the account which i of course have chosen and it will say you Google hasn't verified this app, so that's perfectly fine. Uh, because if you scroll over here, it also says this particular uh, may trigger the message, so that's fine to accept. Click on continue and give all the permissions. Uh, it, okay, it may show this page because it's a local host, but uh, after a while, it will say everything is done, it's successful, and you may close this window. So just close this window. I think I can close this also. So that's fine. And now if I go back here, so this part is done now now to test it so if i scroll down so it says the quickest way to test that this is working is to use the rest api call command so you can copy this and then go to our postman application over here just click on import and import this okay so it may take a while okay so this part we may have to remove and just give the call command that should work and it has imported my call command. You can see all the headers and all. The only thing we have to fit in is the project ID and the access token. So let's do one by one. So let's go to back to our project. And uh, for the project ID, you can get it from here. Just control C and then go back to your postman and over here, just add it. And for authorization in terms of access token, what you can do is we can, okay, let me see. You can run this particular command, Google Cloud from the console so i'll go back to my console and just run this command it will take a, give you a access token don't use this access token by the way i'll remove it after this uh, tutorial but still uh, yeah we should not reuse some else's access token and just paste it over here and click on send and i'm expecting it to work perfect if you can see it works it gives me the list of all the gemini models which are available okay uh, what i can also do a quick experiment is by removing say for example uh, the access token by removing one of the letters and see if it gives some error or not. Uh, perfect. So it gives me some errors, which is like code 401. Request invalid, uh, request has uh, had invalid credentials. That's of course expected. So if I just add Y again, no, not six Y. And this should work this time. Perfect, it's working fine. So that's all I wanted to show you in this quick video that uh, how you can create your uh, authentication for, uh, with auth for Gemini APIs and then reuse it to run your Gemini APIs from your uh, desktop. So that's all. I hope this video is useful to you. If you have any questions or suggestions, then please put it in the comment section below. And if you like this video, then please subscribe to my channel. Thank you and have a nice day. Bye.